Hi guys. Um, just came out to the tiny house. It is so cold in here. It's colder in here than it is outside. So I've just started the wood stove. Um, I'm, I was out here the other night uh, putting some shelf liner in, but um, it was actually cracking and tearing because of the cold. I tried getting it warmed up in here, but it, we had another really bad cold spell. It's actually nice now. It's above zero and um, <sighs> You can see my breath in here. Um, so anyway, I just started the wood stove. I'm getting it going. But I just wanted to show you what I got in town yesterday. A lodge. This is the large size um, wok. These are made in America, so I don't mind buying them. Um, you know, this company's been around forever. I think most of our cast iron is Lodge. Chris got some pieces on Kijiji that were really cheap, um, but they were made in Taiwan or something. We prefer the Lodge. And um, there's a company here in town in Drayton Valley that carries it. And, um, you know, it's a family owned business, so uh, I went and ordered it from them. They didn't have it in stock and of course we're always wanting stuff right now, now, now. Um, I'd rather support a small business and um, order it through them than uh, go to one of the big box stores or go to the city. So anyway, uh, my idea was that uh, you see we'll be able to take this ring out of here. Oops. I gotta get used to doing that. Um, put these aside. I might have to get some kind of hook to put those on too. And then the wok will sit right in the hole like that. Isn't that amazing? So I'm really excited about this. You know, we're, we're raising our own chickens, so having chicken um, readily available and um, being able to do stir fries um, to me is a really good use of this and having it sit right down in the hole like that I think is going to be awesome. Um, not sure if I mentioned it on video the other day. It dawned on me while I was out here working alone because I had taken this um, these rings out to try and get it warmer in here. Um, mind you, then the smoke is coming in the kitchen instead of um, up the flue, which is what I want right now until it gets warmer. But um, it occurred to me how nice it would be to roast weenies or marshmallows in here. So I'll probably have to do a video of me roasting marshmallows or wieners in here too. But um, I had ordered this uh, wok um, from the folks in town and um, I was so happy we went into town. We hadn't got a call but they had put it under the counter for us and uh, were keeping it for me and I'm just so excited. Another piece added to my collection and um, can't wait to try this too on the wood stove. Now look at I'm smoking myself out here again. Um, I've got all the vents open so I think I'm going to close that. Now I'm going to have to open the door. <laughs> it's actually warmer outside anyway. Get some of the smoke out of here. We've learned in the tiny house too that it actually uh, yellows the cabinets. I was washing them the other day too so that was making me cranky. But anyhow I'm going to um, get it warmed up in here. Uh, maybe add some more You can see how dry it is here where it gets really hot and then it's there's a little bit of residue over here And I brought some hot water out um, To wash I can it's really hard to see but some of the oil dripped onto um, The door there and I don't want my pretty doors looking ugly, so Let some of this smoke clear here the generator just kicked on because it's a really cloudy day. So that's just a part of winter when you're off grid. You need the generator to boost the batteries. Chris um, is up at the neighbors um, working on the trim. He got a bunch ripped the other day. I um, have kept this bag of all this rubber stuff, all different kinds of sizes and everything. And that is what I'm lining all the drawers with here. 
so I was going around and cutting them to the right size to sit in the drawers. I might just put the shelf liner in the shallow drawers. Um, and then I was putting shelf liner on the shelves here for the linen closet. So I've got to do the sh one shelf that I'm putting in there and then I have to do the bottom. Um, but you can see how like this piece tore because it was just so cold. So I might not be able to do it. I'm not really sure. Um, I might have to just stick to doing the rubber stuff, cutting it to size. Boy, I did smoke myself out, didn't I? Um, but I've got a lot of this stuff and obviously I have a lot of drawers to get done. So um, I'm going to work on getting this, but I just had to show you the new walk. Um, pretty excited about that. So now I've seen a lot of people talk about these say they're pre-seasoned, um, but you can see how like the pits in this. Um, some people actually sand them uh, right when they're new, sand the, the bumpy finish off because it's a little too bumpy and um, then re-season it. So I'm not too sure I might end up having to do that. Now I'm just going to really quickly t go out with Chris and um, get you to, him to show you what he's been feeding the chickens because like I said I it's been we've had so much cold this winter and with my um, ankle uh, you know I'm I'm allowed to walk on it a bit but I'm trying not to walk on it any more than I have to because some days I'm on my feet a lot like for hours every day and um, it is a, it is very painful afterwards um, in the evening so um, I'm really afraid of you know slipping and falling on the ice and um, and then of course when it's slushy like this this boot scoops up the wet snow on my foot and I want to show you what he's feeding the chickens and then um, if you have any more questions about what he's feeding the chickens or why then you can just uh, send us questions in the comments so Chris is just going to explain what he feeds the chickens and how much Okay, this is our barley and molasses and corn. And then this is cracked corn. I like cracked corn though for cold. And then this is a regular, regular laying pellets. You'll notice again, we save all these coffee cans because they have these little handles on them. And we save the bags too. <laughs> yeah, we save all the bags. Uh, I can hear the chickens getting all excited. Oh, girls! I put a little bit up here. For them. We'll be here. They've also got uh, so regular the laying feeder. mash in there. Yeah, the laying mash is still in that feeder. Sure. Oh my goodness, you're dirty. Show all the eggs in there. Oh my goodness. There's the popular box, I guess. Three in there. And there's what, five in there. And there's three over there. So, how many is that? Somebody pecked my foot when I wasn't looking. I don't know if it was Rusty or one of the girls. Chris um, cleaned out the chicken coop a week or so ago. And you can see how much he added to the compost there. That's going to be awesome for the garden. A lot of stuff to uh, till into the garden because that's quite a, that's a few months worth of um, stuff out of the chicken coop. I also throw the cracked corn there and from here. The cracked corn um, helps then, them stay warm apparently. And then over underneath the shelter they've got all three. So that's what 10 eggs already today or 11? That's 11. Oh, that's 11. And one feather. And a feather. <laughs> 
So we're still getting girl. almost a dozen a day. There's a little girl. Yeah, that's the little friendly one that escaped Hi. from the meat birds. Hi, girl. She usually she, He calls her little girl. I call her little chicken. She's got the black, the little black feathers around her neck. It is so warm today. And so they're going to have a really nice day. Um, being outside. You can see where they're sort of digging in the dirt here. They missed their dirt bath. Chris just chopped up a whole pile of kindling yesterday from ripping the trim for the tiny house. And it's so nice to have that kindling always ready. Look at you girls. Oh, it's a beautiful day. Yeah. It's such a beautiful day. Oh, look at you, Rusty. Scruffy looking boy. Oh my goodness. He's losing some more um, of his comb. You can see the black stuff is coming off. No, never mind. Don't you dare. See, I don't have my crutches now. Go on. I've been fending him off for months with my crutches. Yeah, you just give me the sideways look, you devil chicken. You can still go in the freezer. Imagine, after me doctoring you up for months. Isn't that awful? You should be ashamed. Hang your head. That, there, I don't know which one that is. I, that might be Betty. They just love him. Treat him like he's a rock star, follow him around. Oh, it's a beautiful day. A little bit of a wind, but it's uh, warm out, so. WP is so dirty. She sure needs her dirt bath. And they're all going to the front step, crazy chickens. Well guys, it is another beautiful day on the prairie. 10 degrees Celsius today. I'm not even going to light the wood stove. It's so warm in here. Um, I had the wood stove going yesterday. Uh, so, and it was actually quite chilly in here yesterday, but uh, we've got another warm spell. And I mean, like, this, this is a heat wave in Alberta, especially in the middle of, well, we're almost, um, we're into February now. So uh, 10 degrees Celsius in February, I'll take it. So um, anyway, I'm going to continue with the drawer liners. I um, got this rubber stuff put in uh, most of the drawers. I'm going to put it on the bottom shelf of each of these cabinets because I found in that whole bag of it that um, I had three pieces. So I'm going to put, um, well, I've got one here. I think I've got two or three more. I have to wash them because um, they were older pieces. And uh, so what I did was I started um, putting the shelf liner on the shelves before I put them in. It's so much easier to do. So um, I was doing that last night, got tired, <laughs> so I went inside. But um, I used a bunch of um, older stuff to do these drawers. And then I had bought some new rolls um, to do here. I've got to remember when we go to Ikea to do the returns to get the dividers to go up here for my cookie sheets and stuff. I do that in all of these fridge cabinets. Um, Chris went up and got a coat of paint on the trim today and uh, I'm going to continue with this. I'm hoping next week the laminate will be in so we can off to pick up the plywood and the trim to go on the front edge and um, then I think we can get the countertops done. I might get him to bring the stove and fridge in here just because they're in the way out in the trailer. And it just um, helps me. I like to visualize uh, everything and it'll just make it seem like it's a little more finished. Um, he put the uh, light in here yesterday. I don't know if... No, he doesn't have that breaker on, I don't think. Um, now he was complaining because this is hanging down. 
So I don't know if I'll be able to cover that with another piece of decor strip or whether it won't be seen. I think it will be seen even when I get the decor strip on here. So I'm not too sure what I'm going to do about that. Anyway, it's not the end of the world, but I also uh, measured where I wanted to put the shelves uh, according to the measurements in the current tiny house. Um, because like I said, I like to be able to squeeze an extra shelf in if I can, and um, that would be awesome. So once we get this um, countertop done in here, I will get the two vessel sinks out to see which one I'm going to use. I have a beautiful green glass one, and then I have another white um, porcelain one like the one in the current tiny house. So again, that's going to make it seem, well, especially once he gets the trim up here, it'll seem much more like things are getting finished here. And then there might be some paint touch-ups. You can see um, some shrinkage up here, uh, you know, um, down here. So maybe we should have, well, you, you can't really wait too long to paint. We wanted to paint before. But what I do is I go along with a really small brush. I'll just go along with a really small brush and fill those in on a day when I don't have too much to do. Ha ha. Now, another thing, um, if you hadn't seen it in the previous video, this is the laminate. I found this in an old box of samples and I thought, my goodness, that looks like it would go with that those tiles pretty easy, pretty well. So I took it into town with me, um, obviously decided on using this as the laminate. And then I got thinking, um, you know, there's so much gray and there's no black in it. But then again, this is something that I, I used to like to show customers because when you put the, the laminate with the black, then you can see that the black pops more from it. So this will overhang. It's quite dark and I like that the, there will be a bit of a contrast and then I'll have gray stained wood on the edge of the countertop just like the other tiny house. This is a really economical way to um, do your countertops. So I was actually really pleased again when I looked at it with the black handles because there is quite a bit of black popping uh, from it once you um, put it right beside the black. So pretty happy with that choice and um, once the countertops are done I'll sort of um, do a cost on what it costs for the plywood. Of course the plywood is going to be the most expensive part of doing the countertops now because of the price of lumber and, and everything. So, But I will do an, an analysis on what it costs to do the countertops. Now I just thought I'd mention that um, I just realized I had the lights on and although it's their LED and they don't use a lot of light, um, I really don't need the light on. And that's a, the other thing I mentioned about the first tiny house was that we get so much sun and it's not a really <laughs> sunny day. What are you doing, chicken? Um, but you really don't need the lights on in here. And the same with the bathroom. You know, um, it means not having to turn the lights on. I'm going to close the door. You go outside. Uh, Rusty will bring them all in. You know, you can come in, use the washroom without having to turn the light on uh, every time you do. So it's just a little thing you might want to think about, especially if you want to go off grid. Um, one of the places uh, my son had in the city, uh, and it's very typical, uh, the half bath that, you know, everybody uses on the main floor of the house. Um, was on an interior wall, so there was no window. So every time anybody uses the bathroom, they have to turn the light on, of course. So um, this is something that you really need to consider, especially when you're going off grid when it comes to your design. Now this lo looks really dark when I'm standing here, but when I walk in the room, you can see the camera adjusts but um, you can see that it's not that dark. So, I mean, I can come in here, get something out of the freezer, which is gonna be right here. The washer and dryer is gonna be here. I can come in throw a load of laundry in, put stuff in the dryer and not be turning lights on all the time. So that's a big deal when you're on solar. Chris is also working on the uh, electrical panel today. So we won't have to have wires hooked together like this to turn the lights on. <laughs> I 
Well guys, not a terribly exciting day today. Um, again, like I say, sometimes the little things that need to be done in the background um, seem tedious and inconsequential, but it needs to be done. Uh, Chris has stopped working on the electrical panel to go um, change the oil in the truck. He had it draining because it was such a nice warm day, so he's gone to do that. I'm finished the shelves here and um, I don't think I do actually have to buy another pack. Well, we'll see if I want to have another one up there. Um, but I've got this situated like that the other tiny house for coffee cups, drinking glasses, and um, cereal boxes up there. I cut an extra one for this size cabinet, so I've got it to put in the other, the cabinet above the range when I get it. I've got three in here as well. So maybe they did give me, no, there's two in there. So um, anyway, I'm out of shelves. If I need to buy one more pack, that's not a big deal. Um, now Chris did get some of the wiring done on uh, the electrical panel here. But like I said, he's gone to do the truck. Um, I've done as much as I can. I had that bag, that purple bag, right full of the rubber lining. So I've gotten all of these drawers and doors done in the bathroom as well. Um, and I only used one of these rolls. So I've got three rolls um, left to return. I've got every single door and drawer done. And I've still got some of that really heavy duty stuff that I um, used in the bathroom sink. I will put the rest of that in here and then that is another big bag of stuff out of the way. <laughs> we're constantly trying to use stuff up. Now, we were joking with Bob and Rita that we have a sink department in the sea container. Um, we are also going to have a laminate department now too because uh, the laminate that I ordered will give us now three different kinds of laminates to choose from on the next project. You order it, you know, in sheets and you don't... Uh, you have some leftover, but not enough to do this project. So anyway, um, I think I'm going to sign off for today. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell and share this video with your family and friends. And we'll see you next time.